New this morning, CBS Sports Bracketology expert Jerry Palm has installed Miami as a one seed in his latest bracket. Duke is also a one seed, by the way. The Canes get a test tomorrow at home against North Carolina. That is our spotlight game. A couple of weeks ago, the Canes won in Chapel Hill by nine. That was without Reggie Johnson. Now he's back. How is that offense different with him in the lineup and with him on the bench? Well, they've been impressive both ways, and it's tough to work a guy back in. But you look at uh, with Reggie Johnson, he's they got four guys spaced around him, and we call this the A, uh, a site, the two feet in the lane. You can't play behind him in this situation. Too easy of a catch right here. Again, the good spacing, no double team coming, and he finishes inside. I mean, he is just a load to defend. And uh, take a look at this next play. Same thing, just backing his guy down. The, the key, again, the spacing on the perimeter. You've got shooters there. The nice entry pass, one bounce, and a finish. And, uh, you know, they are reincorporating him into the offense. Now, without him, they really remade themselves with Kenny Kaji, who is a stretch four. He starts out on the post on this play. They like to run the screen roll up top with Shane Larkin and Gamble, and you see Kaji replace right behind him. He has the ability to knock down the three and spread defenses. Similar play coming up right here. Kaji starting in low, but eventually he will work outside. He can score in the post, but is much more, uh, much more comfortable out on the perimeter to kick back. And, uh, you know, now they can play two different ways, one with Kaji and one with Reggie Johnson. You know, I was watching that tape, watching Reggie Johnson, 6'10", 290 pounds, basically walk his way into the lane and just create space. Yep. You're a big man who's had to battle all kinds of big men. What do you do with a guy who's such a wide body and you have to defend him down low? Well, the key thing, Jeff, is you've got to do your work early and meet him up top, make him battle for a position and hope over the course of 40 minutes that he doesn't quite fight as hard and you need to get him out of the lane. I think that's the key part. Not very easy, though, right? No, <laughs> easier said that than done. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so Miami wears you down with size. Carolina likes it up-tempo. Roy Williams' teams like to run. That's how they get their best looks, really. Yeah, and, it's, and that's been a work in progress this year, and uh, we'll take a look at, uh, at the film and see how this team scores. Now, interestingly enough, this first one against Boston College, you say James Michael McAdoo starts from behind the end line and just beats everybody down the floor. Now, the key for the point guard here, he has to look up. If he sees like he has numbers, he'll push the ball up the floor, and that's just great hustle by McAdoo out in the open floor. This next shot is a little bit more of a traditional break. They're going to find Marcus Page, and, and a lot of times North Carolina will be a right-handed team. You'll see him come up the right side of the lane. McAdoo, again, sprints inside to the low block, and it opens up the three-point shot on the run for Reggie Bullock. The Tar Heels keep getting better, but are they good enough to knock off Miami and give the Canes their first conference loss? Miami, by the way, has already announced this one is a sellout. Game tomorrow at 2 on ESPN2.